My name is Audrey Clark, and I'm an AC&P student uh, doing an interview here today with... My name is Jason Dupret, and I'm the owner of the Injection Infusion Clinic of Albuquerque. We're a clinic that specializes in ketamine infusions, and I'm a um, nurse practitioner with a specialty in nurse anesthesia. Um, Credential is a certified registered nurse anesthetist. Okay, very cool. Thanks for meeting with me today. Yeah, absolutely. I have some questions for you. So how do you use ketamine in your clinic? Um, so here we use ketamine for a couple of different reasons. Um, the most common reason for us is for uh, treatment-resistant depression. We treat patients that have tried several different, um, more traditional types of treatments for depression, and they haven't had good relief. Uh, we also have limited use of it with some PTSD, OCD, some migraine use, and then for um, chronic pain is the next thing that we most commonly use it for. Very yeah. cool. So what are the risks of using ketamine? So ketamine is actually quite safe. It's been around for over 50 years. It was um, approved by the FDA in the 70s, I think it was 71, um, for use as a general anesthetic. It's really got a very good um, safety profile. And the most common side effects that we see here during our infusions for, for lower dose um, ketamine infusions is um, nausea, we see there's a, there's a risk of uh, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate. Some of the studies indicate that it may increase intracranial pressure, but that's usually for the induction of general anesthesia in higher doses. Mm -hmm. Long-term use, um, some of the studies have shown that it's, it can uh, cause bladder inflammation, so cystitis. It can cause transient elevations of liver enzymes. Uh, those were really the most most common things that we see. Okay. Is there a way to mitigate any of those risks? We do pre-screening, so we rule out patients that are, you know, already have pre-existing liver conditions or conditions that may affect their liver. We do um, pre-infusion lab work where we check the liver function tests. We also do low-dose infusions here, so the risks are mitigated just by small dosing alone. Sure. Yeah. Okay. How does ketamine compare to current traditional treatments for pain and behavioral health pathologies? Uh, so ketamine is not a substitute for traditional treatments. It's reserved for the patients that are treatment resistant. And that, that's for both mental health issues and for um, chronic pain. So it's, uh, it works quite well. We're seeing in line exactly with what the studies are showing, which is about 70% of patients are getting good relief from the ketamine infusions mm -hmm. for mental health disorders. That is uh, right in line with what the other studies are showing. And for chronic pain, the, it's a little bit different. Uh, it works best for neuropathic types of pain. And so because there's no easy diagnosis for neuropathic pain, the results uh, in its use for the neuropathic pain are, are hit or miss uh, just because we don't it's not easy to diagnose neuropathic pain. Sure. So when we're trying, it's kind of a hit or miss situation. Sure. Okay. What's the biggest barrier to ketamine therapy? Um, I would say that the biggest barrier to ketamine therapy is that, uh, one, it's not covered by insurance. That's probably the number one barrier for patients. Uh, it's The cost is a little bit um, steep for some patients for an out-of-pocket cost. And... Right now, the, sh the insurance companies have it listed as an investigational drug. They moved it up recently from the classification of experimental to investigational now that there's more data coming out in the, in the recent years. So hopefully that will change soon. Uh, but yeah, right now it's definitely the cost factor. It's prohibitive for many patients. Sure. Um, what is the cost of ketamine therapy? So the cost is, it varies around the country. You'll see some clinics... For a 40-minute infusion, charging as little as $300, all the way up to, we've seen as high as uh, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars in some cities for a 40-minute ketamine infusion. So it really kind of depends on, on the region and the clinic. So how much would that translate to for a patient getting, if they were to, say, use ketamine as an adjunct therapy for a year, how much are they going to pay out of pocket? Well... For a new patient for mental health, what we do is a series of six infusions. So that, that cost would range anywhere from, at most clinics, $2,500, all the way up to 
double that um, depending on the price of the single infusions. Mm -hmm. And then for mental health, patients need to come back for what we call booster infusions or maintenance infusions. Mm -hmm. And those are on average about every month to six weeks. Mm -hmm. And so that would extend the cost, um, you know, the cost of each infusion every six weeks would be added to that, sure. that initial treatment plan. For chronic pain, we will do, you'll see most clinics doing four hour infusions, four to six hour infusions. And the price of those is significantly higher. You'll see it on the range of anywhere from as low as $900 per infusion, all the way up to I've seen as high as $2,500 per four hour infusion. Wow. And for chronic pain, the, the treatment is usually a series of, infusion, uh, of infusions, and those will range anywhere from five to 10 in most situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many places are using ketamine and what for? So I run uh, a website and I have a provider list of ketamine infusion providers on my website and keep a pretty good tally. And right now we have uh, documentation of over 125 ketamine clinics around the country. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly some that we haven't uh, included just because we don't know about them. So it's over 125, most certainly. Yeah. Cool. What is the future of ketamine? <clears throat> So ketamine is, is a drug that's been around for a long time. The problem with ketamine is that it's going to be replaced when it comes to mental health. And that's because it is an IV infusion. It's not convenient. It's very expensive for the patients. And it's going to be replaced by something simpler to use. Right now, Johnson & Johnson has a medication called S-ketamine, which is the uh, isomer of the racemic version of regular ketamine. So it's the S enantiomer, and what they've developed it into is a nasal spray. And so that would be much more convenient for the patients. It is on a rapid development track with the FDA. Currently they're in the phase three trials um, of the FDA control trials. So they're seeking approval probably around the end of 2018 is what I last read. Oh. So that'll probably um, decrease the use of intravenous ketamine pretty significantly, as long as the studies are showing that it's just as effective, which I haven't seen any of the studies yet. So, But if it's successful, then because of the cost factor, it'll be covered by insurance and it will be more convenient, then it'll probably replace intravenous ketamine. Cool. Yeah. How do providers collaborate with you for their patient's care? So it kind of depends on each provider. Uh, many providers will simply just recommend us to their patients. Other providers will actually call us and ask us about the ketamine infusion treatments and make the determination if that's something that's that their patient might benefit from. And then the other patients will just or other providers will just send us written referrals uh, for their patients to bring with them. So it kind of all depends. It, it's variable depending on the provider's interest in learning about ketamine. We see that the ones that are interested in learning will actually contact us, ask for more information where others just see it as a, an additional treatment option. They either aren't inter interested in learning or maybe they've already read and, and know the basics. So they, they'll just send us their patients. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Can ketamine be used to augment therapy for addicts for pain and or for addiction itself? So it is possible. It's, uh, it's not a direct treatment for addiction, but what a lot of studies have shown is that because ketamine has analgesic properties, it can be used to decrease the amount of opioids that a patient needs to take. And it also has been shown to be beneficial in, the, in mitigating the withdrawal symptoms of opioid withdrawal or even alcohol withdrawal. So in those circumstances, it can be beneficial. Um, one additional thing is that it also decreases the, the pleasure um, response in the brain to various substances. The two that I saw that were studied were morphine and cocaine. So co-administering ketamine with those two substances decreases the brain's response to pleasure uh, after taking those. So that, that could be one additional avenue that could be pursued for use of addiction. Very cool. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to add for us today, Jason? So I, I just think overall ketamine is an awesome treatment option for patients with treatment-resistant depression. We see quite a few patients that have tried every different antidepressant, whether, you know, the different uh, SSRIs, the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, um, you know, the neuroleptic medications, lithium. We've seen, we've seen the whole gamut. 
uh, including shock therapy, TMS therapy, people have gone through cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times ketamine is their absolute last hope. And fortunately, we've been able to help just like what the studies are showing is about 70% of the patients that come here are getting good symptom relief. And uh, the definition of good symptom relief in all the studies is 50% reduction in their symptoms of depression. And for many patients, 50% decrease is, is quite phenomenal for them. And they're, we've had patients leave here very, very excited at the results that they've gotten. So it's definitely a good treatment option and one that I wish more providers knew about mm -hmm. because uh, that's another um, limiting factor to the use of ketamine is that not a lot of providers are, are well educated on the topic and know that it's being used for treatment resistant depression and chronic pain. And if more practitioners knew and were willing to refer, then I think a lot of a lot more patients could benefit from ketamine infusion therapy. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for meeting with me today. I yeah, absolutely. It. My pleasure. Thank you.